Cambo, what next? Cambo is located north of Scotland in the Atlantic margin, halfway between Shetland Islands and the Faroe Islands. It's been in the news quite a lot, as you can see from just a sample of the headlines. And in fact, I was interviewed for this article in the, the New York Times. And the journalist was asking, well, what's so special about Cambo? And my answer is, or was, well, nothing really. It just happens to be west of where COP26 is taking place. What is Cambo? Here's a map showing Cambo, located here just close to the uh, Faroe Shetland, um, sorry, the Faroe Islands uh, median line with the UK, but it's entirely within UK uh, waters here. It's a field that's been discovered um, for about 20 years now and was uh, coming forward for a uh, development decision at the end of 2021. We're going to follow the story of what happened next. We have a YouTube video, and that features the, the Greater Lagan area, so Lagan, Tormor, Glenlivet, and uh, Edradour, and, and is an interesting watch for what's going on to the north. We think we'll be doing a video in the near future on Rosebank, which is coming forward for development, and just flagging the fact that there is uh, the BP Clarefield, which is the largest oil accumulation in the North Atlantic. So here's another map showing Cambo, this time emphasising the fact that it is in very deep water. Here's the 1,000 metre isobath, and so you can see that this is over 3,000 foot water depth. The field itself is operated by uh, Sikar Point, discovered in 2002. Uh, here's a structure map showing that its actual fact at around about 2,240 metres is actually not that far underneath the, uh, the, the the water column so the, there's, there's actually quite a thin overburden here. In terms of the reservoir here it's a tertiary age Hildesay sandstone. There have been six exploration and appraisal wells drilled on the feature so it's well understood in terms of its size. Sikar Point and Shell are the co-venturers in the license and it was planned to have a uh, an FPSO here and you can see this the seabed layout here. What's going to be was uh, seven uh, oil producers and two water injectors in phase 1A. The FPSO was going to be a new build cylindrical vessel. The gas export was going to be via WASPs and the size of the field, well, 170 million barrels of reserves was, was quoted. Here's what uh, Cambo looks like and suffice to say that uh, you can see the sediments here, the tertiary sediments draped over this, uh, this basement high on the uh, Corona Ridge. And this was uh, an old seismic line, but you can see uh, it's still quite a prominent feature here. Today's sponsors are Expro News. Expro News are the leading news website for the geoscience community in Northwest Europe. Find a link to their website in the video description below. How do we put these videos together so quickly? Well, this is the information that we have to call on for all these various uh, fields, and that's from our Trove database. Now, there's a number of uh, mistakes or misleading comments that uh, have been put out. Here's one at the top from New Scientists. They talk about 800 million barrels of oil in the seabed. Well, under the seabed, sure, and there may be 800 million barrels in place, but only 170 million barrels of those are likely to come out. So again, you know, it's important to differentiate between what is the resource size and what is the reserves size. Detractors describe Cambo as heavy oil. Well, you know, here's the range. This is from a PVT report for one of the wells. And uh, you can see that the range, 22 to 26 API gravity, it's actually in line with the sort of oils that are, are, are developed and produced at the Alberfield, Griffin, Captain, to name but a few. So it's not a heavy, it's actually quite a, a sweet crude. That is, it doesn't have any uh, particular contaminants in it like uh, high levels of sulfur or a sour or acid gas. People um, sort of misunderstand that, but Shell have not withdrawn from the license. They're still on there and we await next steps. Other comments, uh, you've probably seen other other things said in the in the press which have been you know misleading or misunderstandings uh, um, so please put them in the in the comments below so the chronology Hess discovered Cambo back in 2002 and Sikar Point took over the operatorship in 2017 
Now, the decision to, to go ahead and actually sanction Cambo was deferred in March 2020 uh, with the global pandemic. In June of 21, the environmental statement for Cambo was resubmitted. And uh, in August, there was uh, protests ahead of COP26 in Glasgow by Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth. And so there was a lot of press activity around about that time. So COP26 took place in Glasgow. On the 16th of November, the Scottish government uh, withdrew its support for the project. And on the 2nd of December, Shell withdrew support for the project. So here are the uh, decision makers. And uh, if you read some of the quotes attributed to these uh, individuals, you can see there's not a, a massive amount of support here. Ironically, it's, uh, it's not a decision for the Scottish Parliament. And indeed, the, uh, the SNP, uh, led by First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, has had to form an alliance with the Scottish Greens and uh, in order to keep power. And uh, ironically, you know, the SNP, who are looking for a Scottish independence vote, need the revenue that comes from the oil and gas industry to justify the economic case. To us, it seems like a classic ready-fire aim situation. Really, it's all about consumption, not production. And let's just have a look at the picture for the UK. Over 30 million cars currently use petrol or diesel. Less than 1 million are electric or hybrid. Now, you know, we are going to move away from petrol and diesel. We should, going forward, use less fossil fuels. Equally, there are 23 million homes with gas central heating. We can't just turn them all off and instantly repower every house with some new form of electricity or uh, central heating supply. It will take time. So we're not going to be carbon free overnight by switching off oil and gas, uh, as, it, as it will leave most people with no heating or transport. It's got to be managed and it, it's got to be something that particularly with the current situation of uh, energy prices going through the roof with the uh, Russia-Ukraine war going on, then that something needs to change. So there will still be oil and gas consumption and production in 2050. But the hope is that that will be offset by gains that are made in carbon capture. So oil isn't just about energy as well. It's clothing, plastics, and medical supplies. It's transition, not crater the world economy by knee jerk. What should happen next? Well, the license should be extended and we should see firm government and regulator support. Since the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, politicians uh, seem to be changing their tune on support for the North Sea sector. New investors need to be sought. This is a project that will probably cost over a billion dollars, so uh, that needs to be found somewhere. And we need to recognise the strategic importance of fields like Cambo as, as a UK reserve. Uh, it does mean that we don't have to import oil from overseas and we have a security of supply, so there's a lower carbon footprint associated with locally produced oil than there would be if it was transported halfway around the world. And next step, let's go ahead and develop Cambo. As you can imagine, there's quite a lot of material that was left on the uh, cutting room floor for this video. If you'd like more, uh, we can certainly do a, a follow-up video with more detail and information. But please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell if you want to see when we make our next release. Thank you for watching. See you next time.